To discuss, let's bring in Ryan Morrow, a national security analyst at the Clarion Project. Ryan, thanks for being with us. Ryan, as we've discussed, the Muslim Brotherhood is already designated as a terror group by a number of countries. Should the U.S. join those countries and designate it as a terrorist organization as well? Oh, absolutely. This should have been done a long time ago. The reason that it wasn't done was because of this myth that the Muslim Brotherhood would be a moderate competitor to groups like Al-Qaeda and later ISIS. Uh, they were seen as less evil and therefore a potential partner uh, as a participant in elections, even though elections to them was just a way of seizing power and instituting a theocracy. And the reason they've been successful in avoiding this designation for so long is because just like companies and other foreign interests, they have a big lobby in the United States uh, that influences the media, businesses, and politicians. And those who come against the Muslim Brotherhood lobby, backed by Turkey and Qatar, have a very serious price to pay to their careers because they will be labeled as an anti-Muslim bigot and Islamophobe without credibility. And it's about time that we finally confront that and start moving forward in the war against radical Islam. This organization has been around for a long time, Ryan, founded uh, back in 1928 in Egypt, heavily influenced by Hitler and the Nazis. The Muslim Brotherhood spied for Hitler's Nazis in the Middle East uh, during World War II. In fact, many of them fought for Hitler. Tell us more about the background of this organization and, and what it does actually advocate for. Sure. So they've openly advocated for theocracy. Now, in some cases, uh, that can involve some type of vote within certain parameters, but that's not democracy. That's not secular democracy as we know it. It's just a certain way of implementing Sharia law. So it was founded in Egypt in 1928 with the objective of resurrecting the caliphate and instituting Sharia theocracy uh, as a competitor to the Western form of governance. And their message was basically that the despair of the Muslim world came from emulating the West too much and, in, and not sticking to strict Sharia law. So that's their fundamental concept. But when you look at terrorist groups around the world that have been connected to the Brotherhood, especially Hamas, mm -hmm. you see a long series of connections. Like Hamas is officially founded as a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas is listed as a foreign terrorist group, but then the Muslim Brotherhood to which it belongs is not. And so the Brotherhood then can come in, set up fronts in the United States, use those fronts to finance Hamas because it's not illegal for the Brotherhood to operate in the United States. And that's how the scheme has worked for so long and why it's so difficult to prosecute these fronts and why this radical Islamic infrastructure around the world has been able to prosper, despite common sense. Yeah, also worthwhile to point out uh, that uh, the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi, uh, as well as the leaders of al-Qaeda, like Osama bin Laden and al-Zawahari, uh, all sort of uh, graduated through the Muslim Brotherhood at one point or another. So, Ryan, if it is indeed designated as a terrorist organization, and as you've discussed, it has far-reaching tentacles into various uh, countries, organizations, uh, political parties as well around the world, what would the implications be? Well, first of all, get ready for an extremely toxic political campaign against the Trump administration and anyone that supports it. You're already seeing it now. It's going to be very vile. And if you're concerned about how toxic the American political culture is, it, just wait. It's going to get worse. Now, the ramifications internationally are actually almost entirely positive. What some people are saying is that would hurt the relations with Qatar and Turkey, which are the state sponsors of the Muslim Brotherhood and responsible for it surviving. And frankly, I think that's a good thing. I want to have bad relationships with countries that are sponsoring terrorists. I don't, I don't treasure their friendship. Uh, so wow. this is a great well, way for us to pressure them. But I am concerned about Erdogan's influence because we know Trump does listen to Erdogan at times. Yeah, well, uh, Ryan, to point out, I hear you, you hear what you're saying, but Turkey is still a NATO ally, so it does make it uh, politically complicated to something I'm sure the Trump administration is, is, is keeping in mind. Thank you so much, as always, for your analysis, Ryan Morrow. Appreciate it.